Well, I'll start this live stream by saying I thoroughly dislike the idea of going live anymore. But every now and then something's going to come up that requires me to go live. So here I am uh, to go through two quick topics that I'm ending this live stream, okay, because I don't want to spend too much time on a live that I do not have to, okay. So what I'm going to do is focus purely on the topic at hand, okay, get topic one out of the way, then get topic two out of the way, okay. First of all, let me share this screen, okay. We're going to do a little bit of a... I'm going to do a little bit of a presentation, okay? Is that showing through? Right, so... Let me just see if this working. Yep, bingo, working. Right, okay. So, like I say, okay, I'm not going to be on here um, any longer than I have to, okay? Because I hate the idea of live streams anymore, okay? Um Oh, it's so nice to see so many guys in the live chat, considering apparently everybody hates my guts. <laughs> but anyway, ignoring that clown, let's focus on the topic. So I did a video the other day. Um, it was um, basically talking about, uh, asking about Jimmy McLarney's pound pound opponents and do I have the information um, needed to uh, uh, I appreciate that, Rascal, but not apparently to some. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I would ask the information about, well, do you have information on Jim McLaney's when does he, when does he uh, fight these opponents? And, you know, I did explain to Jen in comments, okay, and I'm, I'm, this is a nice response, okay, I'm just doing this. So if he's out there and catches this live stream, he'll be able to gain an idea um, of what I'm talking about, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is, now the question of Jimmy McLaney's 18 pound found opponents um, that rated him number one on that 10 countdown, um, you know, he said, well, when did he fight them to when they were rated? Do you have that information? And I said to him in comments, yeah, I do. But creating 120 year pound found ratings, 10 top 10 fighters per year were hard enough without then creating all the additional ones. But I did gain that information, okay? So what I want to do tonight is go through that, then go through this hype in a fighters, uh, a little rant I have about that. So what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to go through Jimmy McLaney's 18 pound pound opponents. And this tells people how sad I am in the, I simply looked at his record and I, I said, yeah, he's one, he's one. And I actually got all 18. I thought I'd get 16 or 17 and I have to check my ratings to find last one. But, oh, God, I got them all, even, even Billy Wallace. <laughs> That's how sad I am. So let us go through this, okay? So let's focus on the first one. You can see there, Fidel the Barber, okay? Um, now, Jimmy McLaren, okay, fought Fidel the Barber. Okay, we're going to do a little, I'm going to do a little demo here. 1924 and 25, he gained his wins over him, okay? Fidel the Barber was pound pound rated 1930, okay, which is a plus five. Now, what I'm doing there is, okay, that is five years after um, Jimmy McLaren fought him. Fidel the Barber was first pound pound rated in my ratings. And basically what I'm going to do here is demonstrate that because what we're really looking for when people talk about, well, did he fight these pound pounders when they were like, at their best kind of thing, being pound pound rated. And what we're going to do is demonstrate that right here. So Fidel Lababa, the first pound pounder on his resume, of course, he fought him later. He fought him and then Lababa went on to become a pound pound fighter, which is still a good thing. But I think really when you're looking for pound pound rated fighters fought around the time they were pound pound rated, you're looking for a minus one, meaning... McLaren fought him the year following him being a pound foundry. We're coming into that year as a pound founder. That to me is acceptable. Also, we're looking for zeros. Okay. Zeros mean that fighter was pound pound rated that year McLaren fought him. Okay. So just to put Haplo at rest, sadly, Benny Leonard is not going to be a minus one or a zero. Okay. Um, and the last one is a plus one. Okay. So McLaren fights him, then year after, he becomes a pound pounder. And I think if you look at it from those three angles, the minus one, so a guy were pound pound rated the year before McLaren fought him, or a zero, meaning McLaren fought him the year he was pound pound rated, or a plus one, meaning McLaren fought him and beat him, and then the year after, he became a pound pounder. So I'm looking to demonstrate how many of these minus one to plus ones we get. But we're going to go through all 18 pound pounders. Also, so if the gent catches this, you can see a full list. Now, the next pound pounder, okay, that Jim McLaren fought, Pancho Villa. 
it's very hard i'm typing around my mic i've got a brand new corner a big corner computer desk it's like it's got shelves i brought a brand new leather high back chair so I, you know i'm sat here like capone <laughs> in corner of my room um now i'm sure over here a line in 40 okay 1925 okay and everyone out there, I'm not bragging, but you can't find this information anywhere else, quite simply, uh, because I created them. So 1923. So that's actually a minus two. Okay, so Pancho Villa was pound pound rated two uh, years before Jimmy McLaren fought him. Let's go to the next opponent. Okay, and by doing this, you'll see the name of every pound pound that McLaren fought. So Bud Taylor. Okay, McLaren beat him 1925 and 1926. Okay. So this is an interesting one, okay, because Bud Taylor was actually rated um, a number of years, okay, but he was rated here, okay, so 1924, 1925, okay, so let me just widen this out a bit so we create a nice list at the end. Okay, so as we can see here, Jimmy McLaren did beat in one of the years. He was pound pound rated, also one of the years after. So let's focus on the zero. So the zero is the first fighter that McLaren fought when Bud Taylor was rated that year pound pound. Next pound pound rated fighter McLaren beat is Joe Glick. Okay, Joe Glick. Uh, Jimmy McLaren fought in 1926, 1929. Okay. So the gentleman who catch this list then, but I thought I'd do this. I'm not doing this often, okay, but we're going through a more rational pound pound list of where they were when he fought them. So Joe Glick was rated, okay, in three years, 1925, 1927, 1928, okay? So actually, but Joe Glick was rated minus one, okay? He was rated the year before he first fought Glick, okay? Then he was rated the year after he fought Glick, okay? Do you get me? Do you get... Yeah, let's... So 19, I'll type all these on here, 19, no, I'm going to run out of space, just call it that, let's widen these out a little bit more. So basically Joe Glick, okay, pound pound opponent number four, um, McLaren is both a minus one, okay, and he's both a plus one. Okay, um, he did not actually fight him in a year of pound pounder, but he fought him the year after he was a pound pounder, and the year before he was a pound pounder, and the year after he was a pound pounder. Okay, so that is a ratio of minus one to plus one. Okay, but let me delete these. Let me just uh, reorganize myself. Bring these closer so I can type more years in. This is very ad hoc, okay? I'm doing it while I'm here, okay? Oh, no, wrong way. So let's push that that way a bit so we gain an idea. Well, happily, we'll be very happy that uh, Benny Lenners will be a significant plus. So there's the first four pound pounders there, right? I've got a system set up now. So let's go from Joe Glick, okay? Go on to the next pound pounder, McLaren beat Jackie Fields. And may I say there's already some great names on here already. McLaren beat Jackie Fields, okay? 1925, okay? Jackie Fields was pound pound rated, okay? 1928, 1929, 1930, and 1932 in my pound pound ratings. So McLaren's closest was a plus three, okay? So we'll have plus three there. So next pound pounder, okay, Billy Wallace. Okay, McLaren beat him, okay, in 1927. Now, Billy Wallace was pound pound rated 1926, okay? So he was pound pound rated a year before McLaren beat him. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Very good fighter, this. Okay, very, very good fighter. Many people haven't heard of Sid Terris. Excellent fighter he was. McLaren fought him 1928. See, we're already getting a list going. I'm getting in my groove. Now, Sid Terris was rated 1924, um, 1925, and 1927. Okay, so McLaren again, a minus one. So for the last two opponents, Billy Wallace and Sid Terris, McLaren has fought them the following year that they were top 10 pound pound rated. 
Okay. Bud Taylor, he has fought him in the year he was pound pound rated. And Joe Glick, he's fought him A, the following year he was pound pound rated. So coming off a pound pound rated year. And also before then, having a pound pound rated year. So the next fighter he fought, okay. Sergeant Sammy Baker. He's not, a, he's not a Hall of Famer. I've made a cock up there. He's not a Hall of Famer. Let's go on to the next one. Tommy Mandel, okay. In fact, let me double check something. Confusing myself now. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Ah, you see, I knew, so I have missed a, I have missed a, uh, a pound pound off. Uh, never mind. Uh, right, so uh, Sammy Mandel, we fought him in nineteen twenty nine. Let's have a look. Oh, oh I've caught me up now, doing all that swapping and changing. Right, let me get my main screen back up. There. No, I don't want to share that one. <clears throat> right, let's try again. Get this back up. I've cocked myself up a bit. Right, there we are. Apologies for that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So Sammy Mandel, okay. Um, Jimmy McLaren beat him 1929 and 1930, okay. Now, Sammy Mandel was pound, pound rated. 1924, 1925. This is only in the new variant of the ratings. 1926, uh, 1928. And 1929, okay. So when we look at that, McLaren did fight him at least once, okay, in the year he was rated, okay. He also fought him the year before he was coming off a pound for pound rating as well. Let's, uh, got some names here that are not on McLaren's pound for pound list. Oh, no, because I'm, I'm not going on all the famers. I'm going on pound for pounders. Right, look, I'm confusing myself. I've got pound pounders in my brain. Right, okay, so young Jack Thompson. So I'll get Sergeant Sammy Baker in there. I thought he's not an Hall of Famer, and then I thought, saw so Real Miller, I thought, no, hang on, he's not an Hall of Famer either. Right, uh, neither is uh, young Jack Thompson. So he fought young Jack Thompson. Right, I'm refocused. 1930, okay. But Lanning beat him 1928. So that's a plus two. Uh, a minus two, okay. Right, next pound pounder. Let's get Sergeant Sammy Baker in there. Now well, that I've cleared up my own brain fart. So Sergeant Sammy Baker, okay, McLaren beat him 1929. Sergeant Sammy Baker was pound pound rated, and not only that, he was pound pound number one rated, 1927. Okay, so two years before McLaren fought him. Um, let's go on to the next one, Billy Patrol. Big body puncher, Billy Patrol, great fighter. So, McLaren beat him, okay, 1931, I've put on there. Every fight may not be on there. And as you can see, Jimmy McLaren also beat him in a year he was pound, pound rated. Next, of course, Benny Leonard. Benny Leonard is in there, of course, McLaren beat him 1932, okay. Uh, Benny Leonard was last pound for pound rated. He was rated a number of years, every year from 1917 to 1923. But put 1923 there, which is plus nine, okay? So there, Hapler will be happy. It clearly shows that he fought him way after he was pound pound rated. Next, pound pound rebeat. Young Corbett the third, okay? Jimmy Lanning destroyed Young Corbett the third in 1933. 
Um, he was rated pound pound 1929, 1930. So that's a minus three, okay? Next, very simple this, very simple. But I can do this on every fighter, but I just can't be bothered. I think I've done enough. So he beat Barney Ross, the great Barney Ross in 1934. I'll, I'll do a pr profile at the end. Barney Ross was rated pound pound 1933, 1934, 1935, and 1936. Rated pound pound four year on trot, and of course, McLaren fought him a year. He was pound pound rated again. Next, great Tony Canzaneri, one of the greatest fighters of all time. Okay, Jimmy McLaren beat him in 1936. Canzaneri was rated, in fact, I'll do this. He was rated 1929 to 1935 every single year, so that's a minus one. Okay, he fought him the year after he was pound pound rated one year before um, McLaren fought him. Then we'll go to Lou Ambers. Lou Ambers, Jimmy McLaren beat him in 1936. His last fight, okay, beating a Hall of Famer, he was rated. As we can see, McLaren beat him on a year he was pound pound rated again. And the final two, okay, I didn't have to go into my pound pound uh, ratings on McLaren's record on my system, but I just had to re scroll down and thought, ah, of course, Ray Miller. Now, McLaren beat Ray Miller 1929, okay, he was pound pound rated 1928. So McLaren beat him coming off a year where he was pound pound rated. And the final fighter, fighter 18, okay, is Sammy Fuller. Okay, McLaren beat him in 1932. And guess what? McLaren, he was pound pound rated in 1932. So there we are, people. Okay, there is all Jimmy. Is there 18 there? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. They are the 18 pound for pound rated fighters, okay, um, that Jimmy McLaren beat in his career. And what the gentleman asked me was, yeah, but how do we know when he beat them, kind of thing? That's what he was getting at. He was nice, so I was nice back. Um, but I wanted to do this little video to show that I can produce this data, but I'm just far too busy to produce it normally. I mean, yes, on my career videos, I could list only fighters they fought pound for pound that year, but I want a broader spectrum, okay? Because a fighter like Bud Taylor, he's not only going to be in his prime for the one year that McLaren beats him. He might be in a prime for five years, six years. He could be pound for pound rated for four of those years. Net, just because a fighter doesn't fight a fighter who's pound for pound rated that year, you know, it doesn't mean it's not still beating a fighter who's pound for pound worthy because that guy goes on to prove it, okay? So Fidel LaBarba, let's just do a breakdown. Fidel LaBarba, okay, um, landing beat 1924-1925. He was not pound for pound rated till 1930, okay? So that's a plus five. So McLaren beat him way earlier in his career before he achieved that pound for pound level. When we look at Pancho Villa, okay, Jimmy McLaren beat him in 1925, which actually should be a plus two, okay? Let me redress. He's a plus two, okay? So McLaren beat him two years after. Now, Bud Taylor, remember, we're looking for minus ones, noughts, or plus ones, showing that McLaren beat them when they were following a pound pound rated year, or he beat them that year they were also rated, or he beat them, and then they went on to be pound pounders next year. I think if you're looking at that three-year gap, that's the best way of doing it. So Bud Taylor, McLaren has a zero. He did fight him when he was pound pound rated. Okay. Now Joe Glick, okay, McLaren beat him both when he was coming off a pound pound year and before he went into another pound pound year. So the fact that McLaren beat him in one year when Glick was pound pound rated the year before, then McLaren beat him, then he was pound pound rated the year after, that shows that he's beating a relevant pound for pounder. Okay. So that's more like two relevant pound pounders. Jackie Fields, McLaren beat him in 1925. Of course, Jackie Fields went on a run as a pound pounder, but a plus three, okay? So McLaren beat him before he got into that pound pound rated phase. Billy Wallace, McLaren beat him following a year Then when Billy Wallace was pound pound rated, okay? So that's, I'll call that three. Sid Terrace, McLaren also beat him coming off a pound pound rated year. So that's four. Sammy Mandel, okay? McLaren did beat him a year he was rated. So that's five current pound for pound is he's beaten, okay? Young Jack Thompson, McLaren is a minus two, okay? He beat him two years after um, he was pound pound rated. Sergeant Sammy Baker is also a minus two. 
But Billy Patrol is pound pounder number six that is totally relevant that Matt Lining beat, okay? He beat him in a year. He fought him. Now, Benny Leonard, obviously, had long been pound pound rated, okay? But that was a long time in the past. So Matt Lining beat Benny Leonard nine years after he was last pound pound rated. So that's a less relevant pound pound win on Matt Lining's record. Young Corbett the third, Matt Lining beat him three years after he was last pound pound rated. So again, that's a bit back in time but then when we go he's already got six barney ross he beat him in a year he was pound pound rated that's seven tony canzanetti the following year that he was a pound pounder okay that's eight lou ambers he beat him a year he was pound pound rated that's nine ray miller he beat him following the year that ray miller had been pound pound rated that's 10 and sammy fuller he beat him the year he was pound pound rated that's 11. So even when you think about, well, when you look at historic ratings, were they all pound pound rated years after or years before? When you look at Jimmy McLaren's pound pound list, 18 fighters, 11 of them were kind of current pound for pounders anyway. And even those like Fidel LaBarba that went on to be a pound for pounder or fighters with a plus two like Pancho uh, Villa should be, yeah, a plus two. You know, that's a bit different. But Jimmy McLaren still beat a huge amount of fighters who were very relevantly pound for pound rated. So it wasn't like he fought a lot of pound for pound rated fighters five, seven, eight years after they were pound for pound rated. Even if you go from a minus two to a plus two, it encompasses pretty much all his pound for pounders. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that, yes, he didn't fight every single fighter that year they were pound for pound rated. But getting in a top 10 annual pound for pound is not an easy task. But what he did do is fight multiple, multiple fighters and multiple great names on there when they were either rated that year or coming off a pound for pound year or prior to going into a pound for pound year. Because to me, being a fighter who's pound for pound rated that year is obviously better. Being someone who's coming off being rated a pound for pounder is excellent. But also I think it's great to beat someone who the following year goes on to be a pound pounder, which is why I said I'm going to focus on the minus one to plus one, okay? So they are all 18 pound for pound rated fighters that Jim McLaren beat. You know, when I do videos like that and I put these numbers up, you know, I think some people sometimes misunderstand they maybe think i'm being vague i can produce this information but i just don't have the time I, i'm working today on fighter 519 joining my retired database okay so i've got so much work to do when we fantasy heavyweight division where heavyweight title fight between those two being decided in the next volume I'm, I'm gonna do tonight i don't have the time to produce this kind of documentation but i can produce it it's just that i don't have the time because i've got other things going on but whatever anyone says, the one thing we can say about Jim McLaren is, yes, he kind of fought, kind of, well, no, really, 1924, 1925, that should be minus five. Kind of got myself mixed up. Because he fought him five years before he was reared. Uh, Pancho is plus two, two years after he was reared, yeah. So, you know, ultimately... Some people could pick at Jim McLaren, but the one thing we can't do is say he did not fight. In fact, going on pound for pound is he beat the very year they were rated. Bud Taylor's one, Sammy Mandel's two, Billy Patrol's three, Barney Ross's four, Lou Ambers is five, Sammy Fuller. He's still beating six pound for pounders in the year they were also rated. And when you think that's a top 10 across all the divisions and those guys got rated in the year that McLaren beat them, McLaren's pound pound record is solid. Okay. It's got a few blemishes. The Benny Leonard win, which is obviously way after Leonard's prime, nine years after he were rated, you know, and, and Pancho Villas a few years and Jackie Fields, you know, that, well, that's actually minus three, really. So, you know, it is what it is, but Jimmy McLaren did beat lots of current rated opponents pound for pounders and he beat lots of opponents who both were pound for pound rated who were pound for pound rated then McLaren whipped him or they were pound for pound rated that year or McLaren whipped him and then they went on following year to be pound for pound rated and when you can produce a list like that with that list of names there 
You know, that to me just highlights that McLaren did fight legitimate pound-for-pound -pound rated fighters in and around the year that they were pound pound rated as well for the vast majority of those opponents. Because every fighter is going to fight fighters who were pound pound rated three years before, four years before, or they're going to fight pound pounders who were rated three or four years before they became pound pounders. But the amazing thing about McLaren's resume, like certain other fighters' resumes I've checked into, he fought many of them when they were current pound pounders. So he has to get the full um, like noggings and respect for that. Okay. So, 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 so. Okay, another, another thing uh, I want to talk about, okay? Another thing I want to talk about um, is something that's never going to happen on my channel overall. And this is the new phenomenon, okay? Well, it's not a new phenomenon. Um, but it's a phenomenon that I don't get dragged into, okay? And it is overblowing fighters, Overblowing fighters, making out that fighters have done so well. And I kind of mentioned it on my Dylan video earlier. Um, and I mentioned that, you know, if a modern fighter has done well enough to be considered better than someone from 30s, I will, if I think they've done better, I will just say they've done better. Whether the modern, old fighter, medium fighter, I don't care. Okay, I look at fighters' resumes and I look at fighters' accomplishments. Okay, you know, I would rate Manny Pacquiao over many old fighters. You know, I would rate Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins over many old fighters. That is not the issue. Some people play this game of, oh, BL, it's all modern fighters and just loves old fighters. No, I'll give credit where credit's due, okay? But I don't buy into this arena where people say, well, well, what you've got to do is you've got to credit these guys. And I'm like, why? Well, they've had 10 title fights. Right, who against? I mean, take Vitaly Klitschko. You know, um, I heard someone talking the other day about Vitaly Klitschko, probably about five days ago now. Um, I was looking back through some old videos, um, and this guy were making out Vitaly Klitschko has got this ATG chin and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, he has. Hmm, okay. But you see, this is where I do overblow. Okay, Vitaly Klitschko has got an ATG chin. First of all, let me just say, do I think Vitaly Klitschko has got a solid chin? Absolutely, I do. Okay, no, no question in my mind. I saw him eat clubbing right hands and vicious uppercuts from Lennox Lewis clean that I've seen knock other heavyweights out. Okay, so basically not really quizzing whether Vitaly Klitschko has a strong chin. But the fact that some people rate him as having a strong chin, I just want to throw some names out there. So let's go through some names. So this super solid chin, uh, Derek Chisora, uh, Albert Sosnowski, uh, Thomas Adamek, uh, Juan Carlos Gomez. Okay. Um, <laughs> Chris Adiola, who's a solid ear, but uh, come on. <laughs> Who exactly is he for? I mean, Cody Sanders is a, bit, uh, is a good puncher. Um, you know, Chris Adiola has a dig on him, but he's technically limited. But, you know, who is the George Foreman on his resume? You know, has he got a George Foreman in his resume? Has he fought someone who can hit like shavers? I mean, you know, this is what I don't do. I don't overblow fighters. But you'll talk to some people and they make out that Vitelli has got, Vitelli's probably got greatest chin in every way of history. He hasn't fought killers. He hasn't fought punches like Liston. He hasn't fought punches like that. He hasn't fought punches on that level. Okay, so when I look at him beating Cody Sanders and Herbie Hyde and Chris Adiola and <laughs> Danny Williams and Juan Carlos Gomez and Sosnowski and Adamek and, you know, Manuel Cha, we can't forget about the frightening power of Manuel Cha, can we? Um, or someone like Chisora. <laughs> So, you know, so, yeah, I say Vitelli's got a solid hell chin, okay? But don't call him an all-time great chin, okay? Because he ain't fought all-time great punches to show that. You know, and I'll really clonk off the Vitelli fans here, okay? Because, frankly, Muhammad Ali fought way bigger punches than Vitelli Klitschko, okay? So in my book, okay, and this is to these modern-only goons, okay? You will never convince me that Vitaly Klitschko has a more proven chin than Ali because he didn't take clean hits off Foreman. He hasn't taken clean hits off Shavers. He hasn't fought an entire selection of multiple powerhouse punches. 
You know, Vitaly Klitschko hadn't even got a tour on his resume. He hadn't even got a Tyson on his resume. He, he, he hadn't even... Who is the big punchers on his resume that show that he's got this elite chin? And this goes to, like, uh, Errol Spence as well. You know, Intangible uh, left me a comment to this article where this clown had rated Errol Spence as one of 10 best... 10 best welterweights since 70s or something. I mean, when I initially got back on my chair after falling off my new leather chair, oh, it's comfy. Hang, hang on a minute. Let me just sit back a minute. Oh, shit. That's comfy. Just rock it. Rock it, baby. Rock it. Yeah, so, you know, when when I died from hysterical laughter and managed to climb back off floor and actually sit on my chair um, at that, when I read that article, you know, big shout out to Intangible for sending me because, you know, we all need a bit of comedy. You know, this stuff goes on all the time. These people overblowing Javante Davis, what has he done? These people blowing up Philip Ergovic, you know, making out that Ergovic is Vitaly Klitschko or Valerie Klitschko. I mean, I'm sorry, Ergovic and even Chisoria. I mean, uh, who is he beating? Old ass Mansoor. Old ass Mansoor. Old ass Kevin Johnson. And then beating Eric Molina. Gee, he's proven. Where's the top five everywhere is beat? Where's the number seven rated everywhere is beat? Where's the number three rated everywhere is beat? He ain't beating any. He's probably. Get, I mean, now we've got talk of Huey Fury fighting Dave Allen. I mean, what a joke of a fight if ever I've seen it. Why ain't Huey Fury challenging top ten everywhere? Why ain't he trying to get meaningful fights? Why are all these guys or a lot of these guys? You know, I sh I shout out Pacquiao all the time. You know, it's not confirmed yet, but there's rumours that Pacquiao may be facing Terence Crawford or that negotiations are going underway. You know, there we've got a guy over 40 fighting one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, and we can't get fighters like Ergovic, who's the next Vitaly, apparently. Well, I hope he builds a better resume than Vitaly, if I'm honest. I don't want another Vitaly. I, I, I want someone with a better resume, if, in all honesty. Um, you know, I don't just want more of the same. I want someone to do try and do better. But, you know, wait, wait. <laughs> this is what I mean. Hergovic has beaten jack shit. He's beaten a limited Molina, an old-ass Mansoor, and an old-ass Kevin Johnson, okay? And some people say, well, Kevin Johnson's still all right. Yeah, he may still be all right. But he's not a Pavekin or Dillian White, is he? <laughs> well, uh, he's not a Joseph Parker. You know, why, why are these guys... You know, people want praise for these guys. And these guys are doing jack. They're doing absolute jack. So they don't get crazy credit from me. You know, guys like that will get credit from me. You know, right, like Javante Davis at Super Featherweight, pulling up Super Bantam weights. Why won't he fight in the top five super featherweights? Why is he pulling up super bantam weights? Why is he pulling up fighters from featherweight or super featherweight? Now he's at flyweight. Why ain't he saying, I want to fight the top five flyweight guys? I want to fight, I want to fight uh Fortuna. I want to fight this guy or that guy. They want crazy credit for these guys, but these fighters are not fighting the top contenders in their division. And the problem is, you know, I all day. Go through fighters' records. And I see the level of competition these guys fight. It brings to mind another video I was going to do. Because someone on Facebook said to me um, yesterday, um, he said, well, why well, why don't you rate, why do you rate the old guys so highly? And then he said, you're a joke. So I just said, so I, I hit him with like six, seven questions. I said, can you name me fighter in the last 30 years who's won 11 top 10 rated fighters in a year or can you list me the fighter in the last 30 years who's had over 40 fights in a year going unbeaten or can you list me the fighter in the last 30 years who's beaten five all of fame opponents in one year or can you list you know i mean and i fired all this stuff at him and he just never responded you know i, I don't want approaching about this stuff you know these fighters will get credit when they do good or great things i'll credit manny pacquiao till day i die He's a great fighter. And he fought Matisse, who, you know, maybe what passed it or not, who cares. But then he fought Adrian Broner, okay, beat him. Then he beat Keith Thurman. And now there's talk, it could be Terence Crawford. You know, he, I mean, Pacquiao is over 40. And, you know, 
he's fighting or threatening to fight current top three pound for pounders when he's past his prime by a number of years. And yet these young guys like Ergovic, they won't even fight a top 10 bloody heavyweight. The, you know, like Huey Fury, who's a guy in his mid-20s. He's on about fighting lower than British level Dave Allen. And Ergovic will probably fight, I don't know, who next? He might rematch Zambano Love, for all I know. Or he might find some weird Lithuanian we've never heard of. I mean, when are these guys, you know, when these guys step up, then I'll credit him for stepping up. But until they do that, I'm not going to. You know, I just can't stand this stuff, really. It drives me insane. And, you know, this is why I avoid a lot of modern boxing talk, because... Why should I credit Javon A. Davis? Why should I credit Billy Pergovich? Why should I credit a Tony Yorker? I will give them credit when they beat legitimate fighters. Not fighters who were decent fringe contenders 10 years ago, like Kevin Johnson. I'll give them credit when they beat a Parker or a Dillian White or a Jarrell Miller or a Povetkin, who's old but still capable, or even beat anybody. That's when I'll start to credit these fighters that they're getting good wins. You know, beating Eric Molina... Don't sit well with me, okay? Means virtually nothing to me when you are talking about a fighter building a resume. You know, the only thing it means is he's building experience. He's having experience fights. He's getting rounds in bank. But none of those wins he's got are going to mean jack, okay? One win over Dillian White or Pavikin or Parker will be a better win than everything he's done on his resume because it's a legitimate, current, top 10 rated fighter. You know? And that's the way I look at boxing. And that is the way I will always look at boxing. Okay? Too many fighters get way overblown long before they've done anything. You know, and I remember even back with Adrian Broner. You know, he captured super featherweight title, then lost it due to weight. Then he got lightweight title. Great performance against um, DeMarco. Uh, I think his probable best career performance in terms of a win. Um, then he jumped up and caught the welterweight title of Maligiani in that horrible horrible performance okay uh then he got that light well weight strike which he lost due to weight again so he's captured titles in four weights lost two of those titles due to not maintaining weight you know um but prior to him losing you know when he got that well weight title people were like wow he could go to like middle now he can he can unify it well and he's going to become the next floyd and look at him now he's seen as a joke so you know I, I, that's why i don't go on this you know stuff little run over but yeah, there is um, there is um, Jim Lanning's pound pound opponents, all eighteen of them. Okay, I've listed them there, um, and hopefully that demonstrates to people, okay, that yes, you know, potentially you could attack Milani, saying, well, he didn't fight this guy or that guy, in. but that is actually not borne out by the by the facts in my pound pound ratings that Milani fought the bulk of those opponents when they were coming off being pound pound rated were pound pound rated that year or he beat them and then they went on the following year to be a pound pound top 10 rated fighter and the sheer amount over 10 okay most of his opponents fit that category so to cap on McLarnin, he definitely fought and beat relevant pound for pounders okay now not all fighters will be that way because i won't mention names but i know some fighters okay who if I did that, what I've done there for you, they would get different results, okay? They would definitely get different results um, and would not, um, you know, and would not um, have the good result that Jimmy McLarnin does. But that's why McLarnin is a great fighter and there are other great fighters as well that fought many relevant pound pounders. Going on that thing I like to go on, minus one to plus one. We're not in between. If you if you beat fighters who are pound pound rated in one of those three categories, to me you are beating a relevant pound pounder or a pound pounder in their kind of prime when they were pound pound rated in their career, because a lot of fighters didn't get onto my pound pound list. If you actually listen back to those videos starting from nineteen twenty three on, what you find is, if I remember that on each video I gave honourable mentions. 
Okay, before I got into 10 pound pound fighters that year, I'd say, right, before I get to 10 this year, I've got some honorable mentions. I'm sure I did honorable mentions. Um, and some of the fighters who didn't get into them pound pound lists were great fighters themselves. But the competition was that tough when you're picking 10 best fighters from the entire year, considering the activity level that they had and all the good fighters or contenders they often fought. You know, like I've said, I've kept threatening to do um, a Maxi Rosenblum video where I actually show year by year and list all his top 10 rated opponents each year. And some of them years are staggering, people. I mean it. You, you know, you are talking tons of top 10 rated fighters each year on some of those years. You know, um, that one video I'm considering doing. But anyway, I've, I've, I've got to get off in the morning. I've got to get my volume 18 done on my fantasy everywhere division. The two contenders are in for the World Heavyweight title. And they said they'd never fight professionally. And we were denied that fight. But fate has played a cruel, ironic, a crude, a crude, ironic twist. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, they are going to fight for the vacant Heavyweight title on my Fantasy Heavyweight division. Uh, and then after that, the winner will embark on his first title reign. So, yeah, I hate going live now. I hate the thought of going live now. I don't like live streams now. Um, since I actually um, um, stopped doing them and stopped watching them, I, I don't even like going to them really now. You know, I'm focusing more on videos, um, totally focusing more on videos. Um, that's my focus and commenting on videos. Um, I'm still supporting all you guys. I'll, I, I do watch all your videos, but I'm just not visiting live streams. Um, I, I was visiting them initially on Playback Gang, but I've got to a point now where I don't even want to visit the live streams. So I just listen to videos. That's where I can catch people's opinions um, rather than listening to loads of babble. Um, I can get opinions on a topic, done, bingo. I can support by leaving a comment, um, supporting channels I like, and then I'm off to the next one, you know. Um, yeah, just a, another word, okay. I've added a load of fighters into my um, database, okay. Um, I've added uh, Frank Childs, uh, Eddie Shevlin, Faye Kaiser, Frank Moran, see more contenders going in. Kid McParland is now in my retired database. All stats in. Sandy Ferguson. Uh, and more recently today, I added Matty Matthews. Okay, another form of pound pound rated fighter from turn at last century. Um, I've also got fighters going in. Battling Seeky, Patsy Klein, Dave Smith, Porky Dan Flynn. And I've also got a list of, I think there's 43 names left on there. I'm crossing them off. I've got a massive list, okay, including Jose Legra, Sully Krieger, um, Bernard Dukes, and I call him Dockison. Uh, I always have done. Ernie Roderick, David A., you know, Dimitri Pirog, Vicente Rondon, Efren Torres, Paul Piro, um, Horacio Acavallo, you know, you name it, everything. Uh, Gaspar Ortega. So there's many, many more fighters going into my retired database. That is my focus now, as well as my fantasy of weight division, doing my stat videos, countdown videos. Uh, I'm also planning a few more countries' top tens. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but I don't know when next live stream is going to do. Uh, I didn't want to do this live stream. Uh, I'd rather done it in video. But with the way I was going to do it, I didn't know how long it would be. Okay, And I'll tell you a secret. In all my time on YouTube, I've never edited a video. Uh, some people may not think that's crazy, but I have never edited a video. As in, I've never recorded something and thought, oh, there's 10 minutes left, chop that off. Never, never done that. I always time my videos, and, and I did that right from early videos I used to do, and I've just got so used to it. That if I look at a slide now and look at what's on it, I have a rough idea how long it'll take me to go through it. So I time slides like that. You know, that's, that's how I work, really. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get off, yeah, so hopefully if that gentleman catches this live stream, there he will find his list of the 18 individual pound pounders that Jimmy McLaren beat. Uh, Jim McLaren also beat 13 Hall of Fame fighters, okay? Um, he's second only behind Adi Greb um, in pound pounders individually beaten uh, with a massive total of 13. And like I say, you know, um, with Jimmy McLaren, I think you are hard-pressed, okay? You are very hard-pressed to find another fighter who has the ratio of Hall of Fame fights per career fights that Matt Lanning has. I mean, his numbers are staggering. I mean, he, even, even if you look at his percentage of his fights where he has beaten an individual Hall of Fame, it's slightly over 20%. So you think about that, just over 20% of his career is beating individual Hall of Famers. You add on the rest of the percentage where he's rematched those fighters and fought those fighters more than once, that 20% swells. McLaren has a huge um, tally 
um, of pound pound fights from his career at all. And I think it's one at best, you know, um, one at best. So, you know, I'll get off now. I've got to do my next heavyweight results and get my 15 round heavyweight title fight in. The two brothers are going to battle it out. Okay. It's been weird how it's ended up. Uh, they've ended up as the two star challengers, but that fight is going to come. Uh, I'm doing it tonight with the other nine results. So, I will get off. Shout out to everybody in the chat. I haven't interacted in the chat much um, today. Let's have a look. Yeah, but, but yeah, before I go, big shout out to Ras, uh, who, who's the Joe Lopez, 40 ounce, intangible, Ras Clot. Oh, I can see Mark in the chat. Uh, Haplo Type Zero, of course. JD Boxing, I'm doing good, JD. Nick Hammer, Wharton Barrett, good shout out to my friend Wharton Barrett. Hope you are well in this uh, balmy, balmy time. Big shout out to ba uh, Tyler Ross also. Um, yeah, big shout out to everybody. Uh, big shout out to Eight Sins, of course, Eight Sins. Um, so, yeah, I've just uploaded Jack Dylan tonight, okay? I've got a few more of those videos ready. I am considering when I'm going to start on Sam Langford's video. That is with his remodeled career where I've comprised about five sources to come up with a version of his career that I'm going to use from now on. So his stats are different. Is now also because of that little blunder I made. You see, in files, I've got lists of all the colored champions from, you know, heavyweight going down the weights, okay? But when I, when I were doing data transfer and calculating the stats, for some reason, I missed two of them off my new list, okay, who were on the old list. I only found this out because I was going through clearing out some of my old data and I've built up new things with new information in. I don't need all of my old ones. So I was sat down going through, right? And it was comical because I was looking at champions that Langford beat in my old file, in my career breakdown. And I, I was just looking. I thought, uh, hmm. Uh, I ain't added it. I ain't transferred him over. And, oh, another one. <laughs> So I've rectified that now. And like I said, I said that on a video. I had to go through about 37 fighters' careers, re-amend their record against champions, re-amend their rounds against champions, their uh, wins over champions, everything. I had uh, chaos over champions, everything. I had to do that in about 37 fighters. I did it in three hours, and it, my God, it was a ball ache. I started it at nine, and I finished it, I think, at 11.57, so just before midnight. And I was grinding away like a machine for three hours, but it's rectified. So Langford's round against champions is now over 800. His fights against champions is now over 80, okay? But you'll see that on Langford's video. That will come in Lang Langford's video when I get round to doing it. But I do have videos ready, okay? Um, I've got... Dave Shades ready, okay? Dave Shades is the next pre-rating era video. It's another monster. The one after that, okay, is a much shorter one, but one of the best 22 fight resumes you can find anywhere in boxing history. Um, and other than that, I'm going to get working on other big um, career breakdowns. I've got Benny Leonard to do, of course. Um, I've still got people like Levinsky to do and so many other top fighters from that time I've got to do, um, Jack Johnson and many others, okay? So I've still got so many fighters to do. I want to get Joe Janetsky video done as well um so just a bit of an update end of this so i've had my rant on don't overblow fighters to me if you're on over overblow fighters just don't come to me with it um you know go just go somewhere else just go somewhere else uh eight sins uh you're sending me an email on langford's hall of fame record my hall of fame record on langford is now different to the one you know of when i do when i do his um hall of when i do his video um you'll see it's different to what i had it before so i think that's what you're i think that's what you're going to be pointing out but i've already rectified it buddy i've already changed his hall of fame record he's been reduced from 12 hall of famers beaten to 11 hall of famers beaten um and his fights against hall of famers is down from 30 wins to 27 wins um and just certain other things but when you actually see his career video when I do it. I'll do it over next week. Um, I'll get it ready over next week. It will have to wait until after other two are done. Um, but when you see that, he sings, you'll, you'll think, oh, yeah, he's, he's sorted that. Yeah, I've, I've already got that, buddy. Um, because when I finished the 500 and I, were, I, was, I spent like two or three weeks, I was trawling through everything, okay? There were one fighter. There were one fighter because I've been going through everything because, you know, when you create a massive database at that speed, 
Okay. What what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna make little errors here or there. Now I made some errors on video, mistyping. Okay, and I often I mainly pick those up in the video. I didn't on Johnny Nelson, but you know when you're working all day on videos, it's easier when you type in numbers and letters all day to make a little misprint. Okay, I didn't pick the Johnny Nelson one up that someone pointed out, so appreciate that from him. But I did pick up many others while I was doing the video. I'd be doing video, I'd be saying, oh yeah, I've, I've done that wrong, that's actually so-and-so, and I'll amend it afterwards. But there were some errors from the historical transfer. When I say transfer, people, I used to break all the careers down one way, but I've now transferred and collated all that data into a simple database where I can find any stats very, very quickly, okay? Like um, like ring-rated opponents. You know, I you could give me a name, Jose Napoli's mention a fighter, and in about 30, sec 30, 40 seconds, I can find out every single division that fighter was rated in and what position it was rated in because I built the system to do that. I did that so it helped with my videos because my videos were taking a long time. Now I can do a 200 fight career in a few hours. Very quick, that's typing it all up and adding all slides and adding backgrounds and adding images and typing it all up as well. But actually finding information is much easier now, thankfully, than it was earlier on. Because earlier on, it was hard work. But yeah, it seems I, I fully know what you're talking about and it's already rectified, buddy. So yeah, I've... I'm going to end on this as well. I've enjoyed not going around live streams. Um, I have totally enjoyed going around live streams and, uh, you know, to, to Rasklaw and to uh, Boxing Jedi as well. I haven't mentioned doing it in the live chat. Uh, well, Rasklaw is Boxing Jedi. In, but to everyone out there, you know, just a big shout out to you. Um, sorry, I'm not coming around anybody's lives, but I'm not going anywhere. But I'm going to be allowed to be trolled by idiots, you know, um, who know virtually F all about the sport. I don't want to be trolled by those idiots. I don't really want to interact with them. You know, on my channel, the show up, they get blocked. Simple as that. Gone forever. You know, I just want to do my content um, and not put up with fucking aggro, stupid little turds, um, you know, thinking the Johnny Big Bollocks. You know, I just can't be bothered. So, yep, I'm going to get off. I am out for now. I've got to get on with these heavyweight results. So, yeah, there may not be a live stream for some time, but like I said, this one, um, I didn't know how long I was going to need. So I just thought, you know, yeah, I, will like, I don't want to do a live. I'd rather do it on video. And I was like, how long will it take? I was looking at it like, um, uh, I thought, you know what, I'll just go live this once. But anyway, big shout out to everyone. Hope everyone's safe. Um Hope everyone in America is especially safe um, during this troubling time. Um, and uh, all of you take care. So I'm out for now. I may not go live um, for some time. I'll catch you all later. I'm out.